one of our most important preserving tools. Today we're talking everything freezers. How to defrost a chest freezer the proper way, how to organize your food so that it doesn't get lost in the depths of the freezer, the pros and cons of a chest freezer, and the alarm we use so that we don't lose all our precious food if something happens. I've also got resources for inspiration and instruction if you need help with freezing the fruits and veggies you grow. And I've created two free printables, a freezer inventory list and a freezer defrosting checklist so that using your freezer is a joy and not a chore. How do you know when it's time to defrost? Well, most manufacturers recommend defrosting when the ice buildup is a quarter to a half inch thick. And for us, that translates to about one time a year. And I see you guys out there with your thick, thick ice walls who haven't defrosted your freezers in like three years. Why this is important to do is that as the ice builds up, it can accumulate near the door like this and make it difficult to close and seal properly. This leads to temperature fluctuations and freezer burn, and it also decreases the lifespan of the freezer. So to get started, turn off the freezer. And actually most manufacturers recommend you unplug it when you do this. And then we're gonna take everything out. And we'll talk about organization in a minute, but you can see here, we keep everything stored in boxes, which makes this really, really easy. If you just have everything piled on top of each other in the freezer, I can see how the prospect of defrosting seems overwhelming. And also, how do you even find anything in there? I know that I really hate the feeling of defeat that comes from knowing you have good food in the freezer, food that needs to be used and that you want to use, but you can't find it or you just cringe at the thought of having to dig for it. Whenever I start to feel this way, it's usually time for a reorganization or a clean out. And once all the food is out of the freezer, we work as quickly as possible. Because cold air sinks, we use a fan to help blow the cold air up and out. You wanna make sure you get that air circulating all the way to the bottom. So we're propping up the fan here to position it just a little bit better. It usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes before the ice starts to loosen from the sides. And by the way, this waiting period is a really great time to organize and inventory your food. How you organize everything is up to you, but we tend to keep like with like. All the berries and different fruits together in a box, all the green beans and broccoli in another, and I'll put things like broth and dairy together. I also keep one of the top boxes open for things that I grab often, like herbs or ready-made soups or leftovers. And we actually have more than one large freezer. The freezer we're defrosting today is where we keep all the fruits and veggies we grow. And it also holds pantry items like nuts, dried milk powder, bread, ice cream, things like that. Our second freezer, this freezer here, holds all the meat. And we take a really similar approach to keeping it organized. There's a couple boxes of ground beef. There's one with steaks and roasts. And then there's a pork box and a chicken box and a seafood box. And everything is always very easy to find and very easy to get to. One thing we're doing today while we have this all torn apart is replacing some of the boxes because their handles have broken over time. And that makes them really difficult to lift out of the freezer. It's really nice, probably necessary, to have handles on these boxes because they can get really heavy. Our favorite boxes are these big ones. They're called banana boxes and they are what bananas are shipped to the grocery store in. We also use banker boxes and I've seen people use simple like doubled paper grocery bags or even fabric grocery bags to help organize. The point is that when the food is contained in something, it's easy to lift out and reach the other stuff at the bottom. And that way your freezer doesn't turn into a black hole where food disappears forever. Once things are organized, we put heavy blankets over the boxes to keep the cold in. And as long as you don't do this when it's blazing hot out, the food will stay frozen for the short time it takes to defrost the freezer. If you are wondering how I became such a freezer wizard, I've been freezing our produce for a long time. It's my favorite mode of preservation. And I wrote a book called Freeze Fresh which has an incredible amount of information, basically everything you need to know for freezing produce. I'll put a link for this below. You can find it wherever you like to buy books. Okay, here's a huge mistake I see people making with their chest freezers. Do not pry the ice off. You have to wait for it to release. You can help it a bit like we're doing here by pushing it down, but you do need to be gentle and you don't wanna pull on it. Otherwise you can damage the walls of your freezer. And yes, this is very satisfying to do, kind of like kicking the icy snow chunks off your car tires in the winter. Mistake number two is using something metal 
to scrape the ice off the walls or off the bottom of the freezer. Don't do that. And you also should not use anything with heat, like warm water or a hairdryer. Do collect the ice while it's in big chunks because it's easier to pick up that way, but use something plastic when you're making any contact with the walls or the floor. We are using a plastic container. It's just like a plastic food container. And uh, pro tip, we put a bucket in the freezer so we don't have to lift the ice all the way up and out. Now you can see very clearly here to what is one of the cons of a chest freezer. And that is that you need to be fairly tall and able-bodied to get to the things in the very bottom. However, there are a lot of pros that come with a chest freezer and they are my preferred type. I just think they perform better than uprights. Chest freezers also have more usable space inside compared to an upright and they are typically less expensive to buy and less expensive to run. Because of the way everything packs snugly into a chest freezer, food will last longer if the power goes out than it will in an upright, usually by a whole day. Two other cons are that they take up more floor space than an upright and they usually only come in this very utilitarian white color. Now, after we get all the ice out, we go in with a big towel for the bulk drying and we wipe everything, including the walls and the floor. Once we have most of the water out and there are no big puddles left, we come in with some super absorbent tea towels or like flour sack type towels to do a final drying. And don't forget underneath the lid and around the top edge, there's usually some moisture there too. You really wanna get the inside of the freezer completely, completely dry. And probably the most important part, now is the time to turn the freezer back on. We want this back on as soon as possible, so we do this when we're almost done with the drying. Do not forget, set an alarm on your phone if you need to, tie a string to the door if you're prone to forgetfulness, whatever it takes. If you want all these freezer defrosting steps and tips in one easy place to read, I created a free freezer cleaning checklist that you can print and have with you, and I'll put a link to that in the video description below. If you need help with inventory and organization, I also have a freezer inventory list that you can print as well. Now load everything back up. And as far as how to keep track of what you have in the freezer, especially if you have a lot of different things, I do think it's helpful to keep a list. And if you have my book, Freeze Fresh, I have no doubt that your freezer is full of all kinds of unique and delicious goods. You can keep a paper inventory list on a clipboard near the freezer and check things off as you take them out or just keep a note on your phone. But a written list is also really helpful for meal planning and making sure that you actually use up everything you work so hard to preserve. Even if your list isn't always up to date, I think having an imperfect list is better than having no list at all. One thing that you might find you need to do is alter your boxes and kind of customize them for your freezer. We often have to shave a little off the top to make them fit and make the freezer close without interference. This is a new banker box we switched to and it's just a little bit too tall for the space. So Carl's using a box cutter just to trim it up. Once we get to the top layer, we add a box and then close the lid of the freezer to make sure it closes correctly. And then we add another box and check again. If there's a problem, something sticking up too high, it's easier to tell after each box addition rather than when you have them all in. And you'll see here Carl turning this box around. It was actually cut to fit the other direction because of that piece of plastic with the light on it that hangs down from the lid. From start to finish, defrosting and organizing a huge 20 cubic foot freezer like this takes the two of us between like 35 and 45 minutes. It's really not that difficult of a task. And if it means that our freezer lasts longer and our food keeps better, it's worth it to keep up with the maintenance. Now, what about freezer security? Well, that's what this little thing is right here. We've used these for years and love them. They're called sensor push and I have them linked in the video description below. This is a sensor that keeps track of the temperature and it relays the info to an app on my phone. Here's what it looks like. And because the freezer is a big metal box and this communicates through Bluetooth, you do need to be within about 20 feet to pick up its signal. If you can't be that close, you can use their gateway. The sensor push will talk to the gateway. The gateway uses Wi-Fi to send the data to their cloud. The app reads it from the cloud so you can see the temperature and get alerts anywhere in the world, basically. In the app, which is really great by the way, it's very user-friendly and useful, I have a high temperature alert set. 
Now, all these points that you see here on the graph are temperatures. The red lines is where we had the freezer open for a long time and it notified us. And we have it set to notify us if the freezer gets above 20 degrees. Our freezers are typically around zero degrees. That way, if the cord comes unplugged or the door gets left open or the freezer just malfunctions, we'll know before everything is thawed. We keep one of these in every freezer. They are just so valuable and really great for peace of mind. There, that is probably more than you ever wanted to know about freezers. Don't forget to print your free freezer defrosting checklist and your inventory list. And check out my book, Freeze Fresh, if you want practical and creative ways to freeze produce. And as always, let me know if you have any questions. If you found this video helpful, I would love it if you could give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you are the first to know whenever a new video is posted.